how do you start up a chiller? One, you got to make, you know, try to make sure everything's buttoned up. So one of the first things that should be done is just visual inspections. Is all the piping done? Um, depending on the type of system, the installation may need to have already been completed and what you're, you know, just how critical the operations are for analysis. You need to make sure there's not any damages to anything. Um, you know, some of this stuff should have been inspected before it got installed and before it went through, um, the, like when it was received. So, but you as the commissioning person, especially like if you're doing a, a commissioning report that's going to be sent to the factory, as we sometimes need to do, then you're going to, like, you're going to be responsible for documenting all that stuff. And if there was damage done and you didn't report that, then that is on you as the commissioning tech. And I'm going to take your question from a, how do you start up from a like commissioning startup perspective, not a turn it on. Because if it's just turn it on, then you need flow, you need safeties, you need a call. Uh, once you have flow, safeties, and call, and you've got enough load, okay, I guess that'd be the fourth thing. So you, if you've got those conditions, the chiller will turn on and run. Um, and if it won't, well, then it's con you got to just troubleshoot from there. That, that, that could go in an infinite number of directions. But yeah, so as a commissioning tech, like you've got to document all that stuff. That becomes your visual inspection. Once you go through the visual process, you're happy with the piping. All the sizes are right. Everything looks like it's set up correctly. If you got any strainers, any valves in place, those are in proper condition, working order. Uh, you'll want to make sure one software is up to date. So sometimes there may be software revisions to the software you'll need to, to do in the field. That'll just be something to verify. Uh, most of the time, that's not going to prevent you from doing a startup unless that software version had a major bug. But usually, the manufacturer will be involved and will make sure you've got that updated software because they know which serial number has got that the bad one, and they'll make sure that whoever the commissioning tech is, they've got the correct one, and they know ahead of time. Hey, we already know this software needs a patch. Here's the patch. Upload it whenever you go to do commissioning. Um, so you'll do that and you'll verify all your sensors, you'll leak search. So by sensor verification, all your temperature sensors, pressure sensors, anything that's on there, you want to verify all of them. Make sure everything is reading correctly, accurately, it's scaled properly. Uh, so that's one of the things that like, um, uh, like, like an MCS panel, if you're dealing with like a dumb bush, you want to make sure all your scalings are correct. You've got the correct refrigerant programmed into the chiller. Sometimes that may come. Uh, program differently and that's not just a Dunham Bush or MCS thing as across the board you want to make sure that your just all your settings and configurations are what you know the chiller is supposed to be if you're doing a commissioning startup you should have the data sheet or the design data sheet on that chiller so everything should match up to that exactly as it says if it didn't somebody screwed up but uh, yeah make sure that your sensors all sensors are within tolerances and the panels configuration is correct all the boards that need to talk to each other are talking to each other um, we can disconnect our motor leads and do some dry fires to make sure that that is correct our phasing on the electrical is correct we have uh, proper phase and rotation uh, which you can do that where they've got meters now that can you can hook up your three leads and verify the polarity of, on the on the uh, wiring to make sure that you've got a clockwise rotation. As long as you do, then you're good. Electrical sensors. Oh, and leak search. Yeah, make sure you leak search. Not only water leak, but um, refrigerant leak. And then this is saying that the chiller come pre-charged. You may have a condition where it came uh, with uh, no no refrigerant in it. It came dry. So in the circumstance that it came dry. Um, you'll have to pull an evacuation and pressure test, pull the evac, go through that whole process, then charge all the refrigerant in. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to do a rapid fire down the list of just things we have to do for a startup commissioning. Um, this becomes extremely specific as we dive into individual models. Um, so all that's been verified. We're ready to actually turn it on. So then you're going to go through, you know, if it's an air cooled system, you're going to stage all your condenser fans, make sure those come on individually. Each one of those is working. There's not any failures there. None of them have any bracket issues from shipment. Um, 
If you've got a water-cooled system, make sure all your pumps are working, your GPM and flows are good. Uh, even with an air-cooled, make sure your evaporator GPM is good per what the DP needs to be for that particular uh, heat exchanger. And then just turn the thing on and actually verify your uh, parameters. Some chillers require field calibrations. Uh, so there's quite a few where uh, they'll the, the, it'll have a service valve, but it will come closed. So like a, a train um, CVH, the inductor has a service valve on the evaporator. It will come closed and you've got to open that, I think what, like a quarter turn or so uh, up to two turns total, somewhere in that range. You've got to, be, and that's, that's something you tune in. Uh, same thing with uh, some Dunham Bush uh, chillers. They come with the valves closed and you've got to open them so far and tune that recovery circuit in so where you're pulling in enough, but you're not over uh, drawing on the, on the evaporator, pulling in a, a lot of heavy liquid refrigerant. So those are things that we have to field calibrate or where your liquid level sensor needs to be set at for a YK that has to be field calibrated. Um, man, I could just... The, Yes, basically you go into the the model specific field calibrations. Here's all the things that we need to calibrate on this particular model, depending on just how it's designed, what it does, what do you need to do. Most of the time your uh, install or startup or IOM literature will explain many of these things. Sometimes it may not. Um, that just comes back to your training, your experience. And if we had a specific model to talk about, we could get into more of those specifics easier. Um, yeah, so it's just a basic, a tuning operation. You know, once you get to the point of actually turning the chiller on, then we're just trying to tune the chiller, right? Uh, the field commissioned items need to be field commissioned. Uh, we calibrate our, uh, um, a flow sensors many times. So many times the flow sensors will need a little bit of, of tweaking on your specific plant. And keep in mind that needs to be done while we're close to set point on where we're going to be on the uh, evaporator side uh, specifically. Yeah, you don't want to calibrate that with a with a hot pull down or a hot loop. You know, you want to calibrate that when we're in the basic temperature range we, we're normally going to function in uh, so that we get an accurate calibration on that electronic flow sensor. I think I covered, I mean, that's the that's the majority of stuff we need to do during a startup commissioning um, as a whole. It's... It's a pretty broad question, but you know there are some consistent things that we need to do between all the different chillers, and then we just get into the characteristics of what makes that chiller unique in its own way. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've I've committed. I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can. Uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 